Good day, one and all. This is James at my PE exam. We're going to talk about the concept of cardiovascular drift. And I have found in the past that sometimes students find, students find this a bit of a confusing idea. When actually, I think it's a pretty simple concept. So let's see if we can simplify it and make sure that you have a little bit of confidence in it. I've defined it for you here. And it, straight away, it's a sort of throw up kind of like a conflict in your mind. Because it's saying an increase in heart rate despite working at the same intensity. So straight away I want you to think, well, I've previously learned that if you have a continued state of exercise in the same intensity, same condition, same incline, same decline, same uh, surface, same intensity, etc., etc., then heart rate should work as sort of a steady state plateauing. In fact, what we tend to find, and I'll, I'll put a bit more detail in this as, as we go through it, is that, of course, what happens is pre-exercise, we all know we have a resting heart rate of 60 to 80 beats per minute. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that exercise starts somewhere here. So this is the start of exercise. Now, let's let's assume we're doing you know, the marathon. Let's, let's say we're running in some way. We're doing some kind of run. Well, what's going to happen to our heart rate, as we know, is we're going to go up we're gonna get a plateau, okay? Now, you should be expecting that to continue onwards and onwards and onwards. And in some ways, you're sort of right. But what we're gonna say here is that this point here, this point here is 20 minutes, 20 minutes of exercise, okay? So from here to here, from here to here is 20 minutes, okay? Well, what we find in a lot of cases with a lot of athletes is rather than that plateau remaining, the heart rate seems to drift upwards, drift, 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 and then of course we get our recovery characteristics, which you already know a lot about. So therefore the question has to be posed, why is this CV, cardiovascular drift, occurring? Why is that actually happening? Because our intuition should tell us that this plateau should be continuing until the end of exercise. And let's just imagine that look at exercise sort of happened here somewhere, right? This was the end of the run. So in that 20 minute period, heart rate drifted up and we want to answer the question of why that was the case. Let's see if we can do that. Well, my first point is to say that this happens after or it can begin after 20 minutes. Now, of course, that's going to vary from athlete to athlete. It's going to vary as well as you'll see in a moment to do with the weather conditions that are actually in place within this particular scenario. So, but it's something after 20 minutes, okay? So some kind of 20 minutes of exercise, as we've shown here, we're going to get this notion of a drift. So why is it happening? Well, the first perhaps and most important point we need to make is that athletes are sweating. You probably already know that the production of water through the aerobic system, through the aerobic resynthesis of adenosine triphosphate, we produce H2O. And one of the ways of getting rid of that, of course, we do breathe some of it out as well, but we sweat it out. And of course, what that ultimately leads to, gradually, not all in one go, is a loss of fluid. Now, again, this is not going to sort of cause you any surprises because you will have performed many times in sporting activities and become thirsty. The feeling of losing water, the feeling of having sweated. But perhaps what we haven't thought about previously, and I would encourage you to think about now, is we experience what is called plasma loss. Now, this has got nothing to do with your TV being stolen. That was a bad joke, I acknowledge. Plasma is the liquid substance of the blood, and you may have previously studied that over 55% of our blood is actually made up of plasma. The, the majority of the rest is red blood cells, a few platelets, a few white blood cells, but plasma is about 55%. And plasma itself is made up primarily of water. About 95% of plasma is water. There's a few other proteins in there and so on, but basically it's water. So of course, when we lose fluid through the process of sweating and breathing out water vapor, the blood itself becomes, and we need to think of a word for stickier, drier, less fluid. And the term we use is that we get an increase in viscosity. Viscosity, we get an increase in viscosity. So if we think about the common sense of that, if the blood becomes stickier, thicker, less with less tendency to move around, that then is going to, as a result of that, increase resistance, okay, to the blood, we mean, Incre increased resistance to blood flow. So what happens in this scenario? Well, of course, what we tend to find 
is that we get a decrease in our stroke volume, okay? So we've studied previously that cardiac output, Q dot, equals stroke volume multiplied by heart rate, okay? Multiplied by, let's choose blue, heart rate. So if we have a scenario where our stroke volume goes down, the amount of blood leaving the left ventricle per contraction, if that volume goes down because of this increased resistance, because of this increase in blood viscosity through the loss of fluid in the plasma, then of course to maintain cardiac output, which is what we've got to do to main steady, maintain steady state exercise, as a result of that, well of course what has to happen? heart rate has to compensate so that the reduction in stroke volume is compensated by an increase in heart rate and that is exactly what we have there so we've got the idea of a tennis player sweating profusely of course this is going to lead to the need to kind of refuel refuel and rehydrate now the bad news is that even if the tennis player you know, drinks copious amounts between the change of ends and so on and so on, it's actually very hard to keep um, hydration levels at resting levels. It's almost impossible, but lots of athletes, cyclists, tennis players, many, many athletes use various strategies to try and achieve that. What we'll also find is in really hot conditions, and we've got the LA Marathon here in 2015, which was a particularly hot day, as I understand it was in the region of 30 plus degrees and numerous, many, many tens and tens of people were hospitalized as a result. Hot conditions will exaggerate the situation. Will exaggerate, one, exaggerate by the way is one of my problem spelling words, double G, there we go. Uh, the hot conditions will exaggerate this because of course what happens, we lose more fluid because sweating is a cooling mechanism for the body. So in these sort of situations, we have to develop various strategies. Okay, now that strategy could be about refueling, it could be about before the race or the event, using things like cooling aids, cooling jackets. Um, but many athletes will uh, really think about this rehydration in a lot of detail and uh, very scientifically to provide, to, to try and minimize this CV drift. That's all for me. Thanks so much.